Because I was and still am an absolute weirdo, the majority of my friend group throughout high school were kids two grades above me, who I still refer to as the upperclassmen. I knew a handful of them when I entered high school, and because I was a socially inept introvert, they became my main friend circle for the remainder of their two years there. It helped that I was in a couple of classes with them, but I hung out with them at every opportunity I could, eating lunch with them and even sneaking out of mandatory freshman study halls with bogus passes to go study with them. Maybe I thought that I was beyond the kids in my grade. Maybe I just really didn't have any other friends. Maybe UFOs aren't real and are just a series of cleverly doctored fakes by an international shadow organization attempting to undermine our trust in the federal government. At least two of those things are true. Anyways, when it eventually came time for our school's annual spring dance my sophomore year, I was left in a predicament. Because I was about as socially competent as a Chia pet, I wasn't talking to any girls. And because I didn't have friends in my grade, I couldn't ask anyone to find me a date. So I was prepared to just sit at home and live vicariously through people's Snapchat stories, cursing myself for the rest of the night for not being able to converse with someone of the opposite sex without stuttering so bad that I sounded like a lawnmower being started. But then, a miracle. One of the upperclassmen knew a girl in his grade whose date had canceled on her and was looking for someone else. I DM'd her on Instagram, conveniently without any information in my bio that would tell her how old I was, and to my immense surprise, she said yes. It was just like the movies, except I wasn't attractive, or funny, or athletic, or really had anything going for me at all except for being kinda nice at Wii Sports. I will still ice anyone in bowling, side note. I bet you didn't even know you could change the color of the ball, huh? Casual. But as I was celebrating the fact that I was a sophomore taking a senior girl to prom, I realized a fatal flaw in my plan. When it came to social events, your grade in my school was less like a title and more like a cast designation. Seniors had special senior privileges, and one of these was going through the main door for dances. Us sophomores, being deemed untouchable by those in the higher cast, were relegated to entering through the side door and effectively coming up a maintenance stairwell. So my date would know immediately that I was a sophomore when we got there because I'd be forced to bow my head in shame and walk around the building to enter with the rest of the inferior underclassmen. I ran to the dean in charge of the dance and begged him to let me enter through the front door, but he was unwavering even in the face of my desperate pleas. I was doomed. When the day eventually came, it started well enough. She actually laughed at one of my jokes, probably because I'd stolen it from a TV show. What's more, because I was kind of tall for my age and it was dark out, I probably could have passed as a senior if I'd had any sort of self-confidence. But as we walked towards the venue, my heart dropped, knowing that it wouldn't last. Yeah, I gotta go in through the side entrance, was the last thing I ever said to her, before both of us ducked into the gym from the side, faces red as tomatoes with embarrassment. She immediately dipped to go find a friend as soon as we got on the dance floor, leaving me to look around in vain for upperclassmen that I knew. I never found any. Now, you would think that the story ends there, but it doesn't, not just because I need the additional watch time to pay for college. I never talked to that girl again, and I'm pretty sure we've both forgotten each other's names, but lo and behold, something like a month after the dance, I bump into the dean in the stairwell. He asked if he could talk to me quickly, and I could have sworn I was going to get another detention for skipping study hall. Instead, he asked how the dance had went, and apologized for not letting me in the front, saying that he couldn't change the policy. He then gave me a 10 minute lecture on how honesty was of the utmost importance in relationships, and concluded with, you'll find love one day. After that, he let me go, apparently oblivious to the fact that everyone in the stairwell had overheard our conversation. Thanks, Mr. S. So, if you want to help me find love one day, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm not actually sure if that's going to help, but do it anyways. Check out the socials, and yeah, stay safe out there.